Hi, so today we will be learning about the basics of functions, how to declare them, how to define them, what are the parameters, what are arguments, and so on. So let's dive right into it. So I've opened my ID and uh, here is the basic template of a function. So what is a function? A function is basically a repeating set of code, set of lines, set of uh, instructions that can be used in multiple files, multiple programs, and you just need to call that function name, uh, call it by name once, and that function does the job for you. So for example, if you want to calculate the square of a number, you just have to put in the logic of that um, squaring uh, into a function and just call that function instead of putting that logic everywhere you want the square of any number. So I will show you that with an example. First of all, let's go through what a basic function should look like in C and C++. So first of all, we have the return type of the function. Yeah, and this can be any valid uh, data type, basically. It can be bool, it can be int, short, long, unsigned long, unsigned integer. It can be void if you don't want to return anything. It can be an STL template, for example, a vector of integers, a vector of booleans. It can be a map, an ordered map, anything. Basically, anything you want to return, you have to specify it right here, right in front of the name of the function. So a name of the function is any kind of a valid name that can you uh, that you can give in C and C++. After the name of this function, you have to include these parentheses. So this will basically tell the compiler that this is a function now coming up. And inside these parentheses, you specify what are the parameters that this function receives. So parameters are basically some kind of uh, uh, data variables that data basically that the function will work upon. The function can use these parameters. So these parameters also have to be a, of a valid type. It can be any STL template, it can be any type uh, that is like a bool, integer, long, anything you want basically. Then we have these curly braces and inside curly braces, so inside the matching pair of curly braces, we have a number of statements. These statements can actually be anything. So for example, you can calculate what is the square of a number. You only say return when you have a valid return type. If you don't have a valid return type, if you have a void, then you don't return anything in that case. So this is basically a template of a function. Or to be precise, this is a template of a function definition. Below this, we have the def uh, we have below this we have the template of a uh, function declaration. So this is basically the same as the one above, but we don't have anything inside these curly braces. So notice that we only have the semicolon right here at the end, and instead of a parameter also having a name, so we can just modify it parameter type and then followed by name. So in a function definition, we have a parameter type followed by a name. In a function definition, we only have a parameter type. This function declaration is also called a method signature. So our example would be just to calculate a square of a number. For that, I have taken a function that will return an int the name is get square and it will take an int. So notice that this has just the int here. It does not have the name of this parameter. And we know that it is a function because it has this parenthesis, right? It is followed by a semicolon. So this is just a function declaration or a method signature. And followed by that, we have the main function. So main is a special kind of function in C and C++ that will be executed the first time when you just run your program. So as soon as you run this program, it will go right into line number 14. It will try to find where the main function is and it will execute the main function first. So it will go and execute this line into var equals five, assign five to var basically, and then it will call get square function and then pass this var as an argument, this time I say argument, and this var will go into this number. Number is a parameter. And then we will have this body of this function executed. 
So what we are going, uh, what we are doing in this get square function is just multiplying number with itself. So this is basically calculating the square of this number. We store it inside the uh, variable named square, and then we return the square variable. We store this in a variable called x, since this returns an integer value. So we return square and any method that returns a value. So its scholar can store the corresponding value inside uh, a variable. So in this case, we are storing the square that's returned by the get square function in a variable named x. And then we print this variable. And after printing it, we just return zero because this is an int main. So main also returns an integer, right? And then um, a zero return value for the main uh, function returns a successful termination, basically. Let us try and run this. So if we run it, we should get a value of 25. Um, let me just expand the window. Okay, so we get 25. What if we modify it to 50 or 70? So we should get something seven times seven is 49. So we should get 4,900. Yeah. And it is working. So one more thing we can basically see here is that the function is defined after the caller. That is the main function. But what if I just put it before main function? Right here. So now the function is before main. So main already knows that get square is in this file. So we no longer need the function declaration. We can just have this function definition and the function would still be called, the program will still run as it was running before. We can try uh, running it. So let's change it to 40. So we should get 1600. Yeah, we do get 1600. So the function, since it is defined before the caller, the caller already knows that this function exists and it calls this function. Get square calls this function. In case you want to place this function after the caller, you have to you have to declare this function beforehand using this syntax. What if we don't want to return anything? So for that example, as I said before, we have to return not if we have to return nothing, we just say void. We don't need this return square now. We can instead just print what the square is right here in this function. And in this case, we don't need to print it here. Notice that since this is a void function now, it is not returning anything. We cannot store any value in x now since get square does not return anything. So we cannot store anything inside this x. So we have to remove this part. Now we have variable var equals 40. This var is being passed into the get square function. This function itself computes and outputs the square of the function, the square of the number. And we don't need to print anything in our main function. So we can remove that. Now, if I run this, we still get 1600. To verify it, we can just change it to, let's say, 43. And we do get 1849, which is the correct answer. So to just recap very quickly, I will just recap everything. In case we have void, the function does not return anything. So we don't use the return statement. In case we do have something in case we do have an integer let's say we are returning an integer we need to return something of the same data type if we are returning something from the function we can store it in a variable the caller can store it and in case we don't want to use the uh, return value we are free to ignore it actually so this is also valid so 
this is a function definition. This was a function declaration. We only needed a declaration if our definition was after the caller. If our, uh, if our declaration was not after the caller, then we don't need the definition right here. So in this lesson, we just learned how to declare a function, how to define a function, what are function parameters, what are arguments, and uh, what happens if you put a function before the caller, what happens after, what happens if you put the function after the caller, how to deal with these both situations, how to use the void keyword, when to use return, when not to use return. So I hope you enjoyed this short lesson, short intro into functions and function definitions. Thank you very much for watching.